Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sasha Scheideroff. I am a principal planner here at MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. And uh, welcome to our webinar on the basics and benefits of cool roofs. Um, I am also joined by my colleagues today, Julia Nasser and Rachel Bowers, who will be presenting. Um, and as we get started, I just want to share a little bit about this project and where it came from, um, and then I'll go into the agenda for today. So um, we uh, at MAPC help facilitate our Metro Mayor's Region Regional Coalition, um, which is comprised of 16 municipalities in the inner core of Metro Boston. Um, and through that work, we have a climate task force that comes together to help better prepare the region for the impacts of climate change, um, as well as better prepare and help reduce greenhouse gas and carbon emissions. Um, and so this project came out of a grant that we received from the state from the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, the MVP program, to work with the 16 communities and Metro mayors to explore um, cool roofs as an option for the region to help better cool our region down, um, provide other benefits, and figure out how we can help to advance cool roof adoption and accelerate that here in the metro region. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide. Um, and I guess I will pass it to Julia to tell us about the agenda and get into what we'll be talking about today. Thanks, Asha. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Julia Nasser. I'm a climate and energy planner, too, at MAPC, um, and excited to share with you all some of the basics and benefits of cool roofs. Um, uh, we're going to talk about some local case studies and then explore a cool roof suitability tool that MAPC developed along with an assessment to determine if cool roof might be right for your property. Um, and then we have some time at the end for questions, comments um, before wrapping up. I want to preface before we get into the material that um, we are having a second part to this webinar. This is a two part series um, on June 26 at 1 p.m. Um, so this second webinar will be how municipalities can use cool roofs to advance their climate goals. Sasha just put the link to register in the, in the chat and we can send it around over email as well. Um, this Webinar will feature some of the tools and resources that MAPC developed to promote cool roofs in your community. So that will feature resources like um, draft zoning ordinance language, guidance on creating a cool roof incentive program, uh, model procurement language, and more. So stay tuned, coming soon to a theater or Zoom screen near you. Um, so now to get into the, the meat of the webinar, the basics of cool roofs. Um, this may be redundant for some folks, but we can't talk about cool roofs without talking about extreme heat first. Um, so first, what is extreme heat? Um, extreme heat is a prolonged period of hotter than average temperatures and sometimes more humid as well. Um, in Massachusetts, we define a heat wave as three plus consecutive days uh, where temperatures are above 90 degrees. Um, and why do we care about extreme heat? I don't think I need to tell you all who are on this webinar today, but um, heat is the deadliest weather-related hazard um, that we see in the United States, more than hurricanes, more than flooding, and the deaths are largely preventable. Um, we also care because the frequency, duration, and severity of extreme heat is increasing in our region due to climate change. Um, and extreme heat becomes more dangerous the longer it lasts, so we're starting to think about um, some strategies to combat heat, like Sasha said, in our uh, Keeping Metro Boston Cool plan. So compared to historic averages, um, Boston and Massachusetts have warmed um, by a couple of degrees since 1970. This is um, as of 2019. Uh, Massachusetts is also warming more at a faster rate than the um, nation as a whole. And while these temperatures may seem small, these are um, 1.2 degrees and 2.8 degrees Fahrenheit. While they may seem small, um, in the in the broader context, these kind of small changes in averages resulting in big changes in the extreme. So that's when we're seeing these um, extreme temperatures that are unprecedented um, in our region. So why is extreme heat dangerous in Massachusetts? Um, I like to say that Massachusetts is a unique um, vulnerability to extreme heat. And I say that as someone who grew up in Florida, 
I've never experienced heat like I have after moving to Boston. And that's because Florida and other places like Phoenix and Texas and California are built for extreme heat or built to handle the heat, whereas we are not. Um, and for infrastructure, to lead with infrastructure, um, our infrastructure is very old. Our housing stock is old and is not built to handle prolonged periods of heat. Um, we have designed our infrastructure and homes to um, withstand cold winters. And so they're also designed to keep the heat in. Um, also our older buildings lack central AC like you would see in Florida and Phoenix and other places. Um, additionally, residents in our region are just less acclimated to higher temperatures and experiencing that for longer periods of times. Our bodies aren't used to such long periods of extreme heat or especially those drastic swings in temperature. Um, and then I think there's a, a cultural element to heat. Um, heat is less culturally ingrained in our region. Um, we don't really have the habit of checking on vulnerable residents during periods of extreme heat or um, knowing to avoid activity outdoors during peak hours. Like, so it's common knowledge in places um, in the Southwest and other hotter regions. And then finally, our systems don't really accommodate for the changing climate. Um, I remember speaking with a, a teacher from a public school, at a, I think it was an elementary school in Malden who mentioned that there was a swing in temperature in, in April, um, this was last year, where uh, the cooling system just didn't kick on yet. And it was so hot and she was a, a teacher to um, special needs students and they weren't allowed to open the windows. And the kids were just laying on the floor because it was so hot in the room. So our systems aren't accommodating for the changing climate either. And then finally, um, heat is dangerous because um, we always see an increase in heat related illnesses such as heat stroke, dehydration, can aggravate respiratory problems and mental stress. Um, so when thinking about what are some of the solutions, um, I know trees always always come up um, and trees are great, but they can take years or decades sometimes to mature. So um, today we are talking about cool roofs um, as a strategy that provides immediate cooling benefits. Oop. Sorry. Um, we wanted to ask you all first um, how familiar you are with cool roofs. Um, is this kind of a totally new concept that you're hearing about for the first time? Do you have some familiar familiarity and want to learn more? Um, are you very familiar or have you installed a cool roof in the past? I'll give you guys a minute to answer that. All right, looks like most folks have some familiarity and are excited to learn more. So you've come to the right place um, in that poll. So cool roofs um, are pretty simple. It's painting the town white. Um, you are we're installing roofs that are designed to reflect more sunlight and absorb less heat than a conventional or non-cool roof. Um, this keeps the building and the surrounding area cooler. And we have a short minute and a half video from the Cool Roof Rating Council, um, just quickly summarizing how, what a cool roof is and how they work. So I will stop talking for a minute and um, play this. I think you have to take yourself off mute because we can't hear it. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Imagine if roofs and walls could bounce away more sunlight than usual. We call these cool surfaces. Some materials naturally have the power to reflect more sunlight, like those with white or lighter colors. Imagine throwing on a light t-shirt compared to a dark one on a hot day. Which one makes you feel hotter? Darker materials can have cooling powers too if they're made with special pigments that reflect infrared light. Cool roofs and walls do something awesome. They make outdoor and indoor temperatures cooler. They act like a shield against the sun's heat, helping buildings stay safer and more comfortable. This isn't just good for the planet, it's also a money saver because we use less energy to cool our spaces. Communities have some tricks up their sleeves to save energy and beat the city heat. In California, they're all about cool roofs. They're required on most types of buildings to keep things chill. 
And guess what? Other states and cities are in on the cool surfaces action too. It's not just plain roofs and walls that can make a difference. Across the country, artists are creating murals using reflective paints to help their communities stay cool in more ways than one. What an awesome way for art and science to work together. Scientists predict that cities will continue to get even hotter because of climate change and their heat islands will make it worse. That's why it's super important to think about heat when we design new buildings and neighborhoods. Just look around your own community. What cool ideas can you think of to beat the heat? So quick intro into cool roofs. Um, this is an example of a cool roof right beside a traditional roof. So you can really see the impact uh, or the, the kind of visual difference between the two. Um, a cool roof um, during the summer or the warmer months, um, the roof is actually the hottest part of your building and can get up to 50 degrees hotter than the temperature we see on our phones, um, which is significant. And if the building doesn't have air conditioning, then those traditional or non-cool roof roofs um, can make the building feel even hotter and more uncomfortable. If the building does have AC, then the cost of cooling can be even higher given all of the heat that um, percolates in from above and um, insulation in the roof can slow down that transfer of heat, but it doesn't totally eliminate it. So um, cool, cool roofs are a great solution to keep the indoor temperature more comfortable. Um, and like they said in the video, cool roofs are not a new technology. They're common in Florida, Texas, California, um, and they're growing, increasingly growing in our region as um, our summers are getting hotter and longer. So I wanted to share about the two main types of cool, how to install a cool roof. Um, cool roofs are very versatile and available in a variety of different colors and types to suit different buildings. Um, the two main types are coating and covering. So a cool roof coating is a reflective coat or paint that is applied over an existing structure. Um, and coatings are typically easy to apply. You can do it with a brush or a roller or spray. Um, the coating is pretty versatile and relatively inexpensive. Um, and it works really well on flat or low sloped roofs. Um, the covering on the other hand is specially designed and um, typically done, typically installed as a replacement for an existing roof. Um, and while cool roof coatings can be more labor intensive, sorry, cool roof coverings can be more labor intensive um, and require more expensive materials or more specialized materials and typically done with professional installation, um, they tend to be more durable than coatings. You may need to apply multiple coatings um, over the course of some years. So coatings and coverings are the two main types. And then some of the questions we often get with cool roofs is, does it have to be white? Um, lighter colors tend to be better at lowering temperature, reflecting sunlight, mm -hmm. but a cool roof doesn't have to be white. Um, there are cooler versions of dark colored roofs um, and products that can suit different aesthetics uh, or historic preservation requirements. So uh, for dark colored coatings, this picture on the bottom right, um, the, the top colors are um, cool roof versions of the material or the color in the bottom is the conventional one. And you can see the value is um, what's called the solar reflective index. And it's just a measure of how well the surface can reflect sunlight instead of absorbing the heat. Um, so for the cooler version of the material, there's a significant difference between the traditional ones. So there are um, non-white versions of cool roofs. Um, a white roof can reflect anywhere from like 60 to 90% of sunlight. Um, these are reflecting about 40 to 48%. Um, so there are some non some some great non-white options. And then there's also different colored materials like these um, Energy Star rated cool roof shingles that um, are great at reflecting sunlight as well. Um, and there are two, um, two other kind of main questions that we get when talking about solar, talking about cool roofs that I wanted to address. Um, and the first is how do cool roofs and solar panels interact? And cool roofs are actually a great complement to rooftop solar um, or any kind of HVAC equipment uh, you may have on the roof. Um, studies have shown that because cool roofs lower the temperature, they actually help improve the efficiency of solar panels um, and help them maintain optimal performance and can even extend their lifespan. So um, something that folks with solar panels are, are starting to think more about. Uh, 
And finally, wanted to address this heating penalty that we um, get, sometimes get questions about. And the heating penalty refers to um, this potential increase in heating bills in the winter months because the roof is reflecting more of that sunlight. Um, and the, the verdict on that or the science is telling us that this, this phenomenon does occur, but it's quite minimal. And the cost savings in the summer months typically significantly outweigh the penalty in the winter months. Um, and while that may occur, the our warming climate is resulting in milder winters and hotter summers, and this kind of further enhances the value of a cool roof. And not to mention that often in the winter, um, historically, when we would get more snow cover, snow acts almost like a white roof. So the the impact uh, of the heating penalty is really quite small. Um, I'm going to move us now into the benefits of cool roofs. If you have any questions on the basics or any specifics, feel free to throw it in the chat. Sasha, over to you. Great. Thanks, Julia. Um, so we covered some of these already. Um, there are three main benefits of installing cool roofs. Um, there's economic and um, money and energy saving benefits, environmental benefits, and then health and well-being benefits. Um, so there are several economic benefits to installing cool roofs. Um, the one is that by making installing a cool roof and making your building cooler, um, it can reduce the need for indoor air conditioning and fans, um, which then can lead to energy cost savings in those summer months. Um, they've also found that uh, cool roofs can help expand and extend the lifespan of the roof um, by reducing degradation um, and the need for rooftop maintenance. Um, and in some cases with, uh, the, with a roof sealant that is cooling, it can also help extend the roof warranty. Um, and then the other piece is that it can also help preserve rooftop equipment, um, prevent overheating, and improve efficiency. Um, so it can be great uh, to be paired with uh, rooftop solar. Some of the environmental benefits. So in addition to energy savings and energy cost savings, um, with a reduced cooling demand, then you would also be seeing a reduced um, carbon emissions associated with your energy use. And then the other big driver that um, we often see in sort of what was our initial interest in looking in cool roofs is also helping to mitigate the urban heat island where our uh, traditional rooftops and traditional buildings are absorbing heat during the day and then re-emitting that heat overnight, um, contributing to urban heat island. And by installing a cool roof, then this helps reflect that same, um, that light out so that you're not absorbing as much heat into the buildings. And that can then in turn help cool down at the neighborhood scale and improve uh, air quality locally as well. Um, so the uh, next piece of benefits, um, we talked a little bit about health and well-being. Um, buildings that have installed cool roofs often see more comfortable indoor air temperatures um, and that need for reduced air conditioning. Um, this is particularly applicable if you don't have air conditioning and don't have cooling and still want to have some of those benefits. Um, and then of course that also contributes to reducing um, heat illnesses um, like heat stress and heat exhaustion that folks might be experiencing. I'm gonna just cover a couple of local case studies um, from cool roofs here in Massachusetts, um, particularly with municipal and institutional buildings that have installed cool roofs. Um, so the first one is the in Chelsea, Massachusetts with the public school district. Um, it, over the past few years, they've invested in installing cool roofs on uh, many of their schools, including in this picture, two middle schools and an elementary school. 
Um, most of the city of Chelsea is considered an urban heat island. And when you look at land surface temperature map for the region, um, uh, Chelsea uh, tends to be in sort of the hottest um, percent, sort of top 5% of hottest areas within our region. Um, and so they installed a cool roof sealant on the roof. Um, and they found that the sealant um, actually also extended their warranty of the roof by 10 years. And so they were interested in doing the cool roofs just in um, bo both for the urban heat island as well as the sealant. Um, and then they've noticed since the installation improvements to indoor air temperature and reducing the need for uh, reducing energy costs in the summer. Next slide. Yeah, great. Another local case study is um, in Boston, Massachusetts, as part of the um, Renew Boston Trust program. Um, the organization LISC ran a program with several affordable housing providers to install cool roofs that were paired with um, sol solar photovoltaic, solar PV arrays. Um, the driving factor for this was helping those affordable housing um, providers in meeting the Emissions Reduction and Disclosure Ordinance, or the BIRDO goals, um, to help drive down um, energy usage within the buildings. And so they were installing solar PV already and knew that the cool roofs would help increase efficiency both for the solar and the building. Um, and an additional benefit for this program has been providing energy cost savings to the housing providers and residents. Um, and then the last case study that we're sharing today is um, what has been deemed a net positive school in Westboro, Mass. Um, so the in this picture, you can see um, in this new net positive school, they installed a PVC membrane um, that is highly reflective and paired that with their solar PV arrays that are on the rooftop. Um, and the design of this new school um, was really driven by meeting their um, aggressive municipal GHG reduction targets. Um, I believe that they are uh, planning to be fossil free by um, 2035 and so had this priority when building their new school of it being net zero. Um, and then once they were able to construct it, they turned out they were actually producing more energy than they were using in um, on site. So hence the net positive. Um, so a uh, two things, sort of additional benefits of this project has been um, reducing the energy needs and costs for the school. Um, and then also that the unique design for the roof also allows natural light inside. So you have the um, PV situated for sort of optimal um, sun exposure. And then on the back side of the arrays, um, that part of the roof are actually windows that allow natural light into the school. Um, and now I believe I'm passing it over to uh, Julia and Rachel to talk a little bit about the um, site suitability tool and analysis documents. Thank you, Sasha. Um, one of the resources that we created as a part of this um, project is a set of resources um, is to understand or to help property owners or managers determine whether a cool roof is right for their property. Um, so there is a two step process to answering that question. Um, the first is via our cool roof suitability tool that Rachel will outline. And then the second is after you go through the tool, um, going through a, a cool roof self-assessment that I'll talk about in a second. But Rachel, can you introduce yourself and then introduce the tool? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rachel Bowers. I am an analyst at MAPC and have been excited to support this project. Um, I need permission to share my screen, Julia. You should be a co-host now. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, I will, I do want to preface that this tool is still in development. Um, so this is not the final version, though I think it's a good representation of um, the analysis we've done and where we're headed with it. Um, and can everyone see my screen? Yep. Wonderful. Um, so I'll walk through sort of the layout of this tool. The idea is that it gives sort of a broad overview based on criteria that you select um, as a user of where in a municipality of interest, um, there might be opportunities for cool roof retrofits. Um, and so when you open the tool, you have sort of this layout here with the map in the middle. The map, when the tool opens, shows two things. Um, one, it shows the Trust for Public Lands heat severity layer, where you know it's that familiar blue to red um, uh, color gradient, where the uh, areas closer to red represent the hottest areas. Um, and then if I zoom in here, you can see that we have roofs um, in colors getting from lightest to darkest with the darkest roofs or the darkest colors representing the darkest roofs. And I'll go into a little bit of where we derive that information from. Um, so to start with identifying roofs that might be suitable for cool roof um, conversion, um, first, we can choose a municipality. I'm going to choose Everett. And then the tool guides you through a set of filters to narrow down on a list of potential roofs. Um, and those factors are related to roof typology that is relevant for cool roofs, land use and ownership that might be relevant, and then some social and environmental variables. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can kind of see in real time what this looks like. Um, but the first set of filters, and we have this information panel here to get some more information, is identifying those low slope roofs that would be good candidates um, for the types of interventions that Julia shared. And then also the dark colored roofs, because you know we don't want to be identifying roofs that are already reflective. Um, and so the way to interact is just to press the button. Um, so if I want to just highlight our lowest slope roofs, then um, you can see when I set that filter, any roof that has what we've identified to be a higher slope or a higher pitch uh, disappear from this potential set of roofs. Um, I will say this data set is from 2021. It's derived from LIDAR, um, which gives us a pretty decent picture overall from what we can tell based on our analysis. There's some sort of edge cases where it's not picking up on um, flat roofs as well as we would like, you know, hopefully in future iterations, we can continue to improve upon that and continue to update as um, MassGIS continues to release LiDAR data. Um, but of course, there's places where the building has changed since 2021. Um, so right now we have a subset of roofs that are all mostly lower slope. We can choose just the subset that are the darkest color. Um, this is also derived from LIDAR. Um, and then we get into properties about the parcel that the roof is on, ownership, land use, um, and then some of those social environmental factors. So um, for those who are interested in just public or municipal ownership, um, you can filter just to show those locations, though that maybe in Everett is less uh, refined, it looks like, because I'm assuming that these high schools are publicly owned, um, though maybe not. Um, maybe those buildings aren't actually school buildings. Um, so that um, reduces the data set quite a bit. I'll keep it on just so that we still have a sample that we're looking on. And I forgot to mention that we have a dashboard that this is part of um, the initial 
tool, when you open it, you can see these numbers change. So um, I'll, as an example, sort of bring up the full data set again. And this just gives an overview of how many potential roofs um, are still in the set that we're looking at, the square footage of cool roof, potential cool roof area, and then the number of residential and commercial units that would be impacted if those roofs were to be converted to cool roofs. So you can see that those numbers will go down considerably as we set those filters. So just looking at low slope and dark colored roofs, we're left with 1700 um, potential roofs in Everett. Um, you can also decide to filter by building typology. This is based on sort of our own internal interpretation of land use codes. Um, and so if you're only interested in, say, residential um, uses, you might just select all the different um, uh, building typologies that are associated with residential uses, as an example. And then finally, you can filter to just show potential rooftops that are within environmental justice communities. I believe in Everett that will leave everything still available. And then you can also filter to just show, um, to leave out any buildings that aren't in the hottest areas of either the municipality or the Metro Mayor's region where this analysis was done. I'll note that the hottest 20% of areas in the municipality or the region are not necessarily going to coincide with the map that is, or the, um, the layer here. It's, it's a different data source, so it might um, there might be a little bit of discrepancy between what looks to be the hottest and what are um, the data that we used identified as the hottest, but I think there, it's, it's pretty much the same. Um, so a few other things you can do with the tool, you know, this leaves us with a subset of a thousand potential cool roofs. That's just residential cool roofs in Everett. Um, if you're interested in exploring some of the underlying data, you can click on this layers button. Um, instead of looking at the range of heat, maybe we want to look at tree canopy in the areas that were um, that we've identified as potential roof areas. Um, and you can also look at heat vulnerability risk factors. So maybe wanting to see the environmental justice populations um, or look at schools and proximity to um, some of the um, <laughs> areas where we know there are um, older or younger populations um, or more vulnerable populations in general. Um, we can also add our own data. So if there's data that you want to add either as a shapefile or from ArcGIS Online, um, you can add that here and sort of explore potential rooftops in connection to those different um, layers. And then finally, you can look at the table of remaining buildings and export it as a CSV or a GeoJSON and work with that data yourself. And that information sort of lends itself to the, the site assessment that Julia is going to walk through. Um, but I guess um, just wondering if there's anything else to sort of show. Um, you know, you can click on a rooftop, get information about it. We hope to continue improving on this pop-up. That's one of the things that we're still working on just to get information about the building, the address, the ownership, that kind of thing. Um, and you can also um, select multiple at once if you want to sort of identify a district that could potentially be a good fit. You can kind of um, draw and just select a subset though that is also an imperfect element of this tool right now. Um, I'll stop there unless Julia there's anything else that you think would be good to cover right now. Um, Rachel there is a question about when slash where is the cool roof tool accessible. Um, so I think we can share the link with folks just to say that um, this is still in the beta test version um, and we'll likely sort of consider it a beta test for the next few months and gather feedback and um, 
feedback from users. Um, it is available for not for the entire MAPC region, just for the 16 municipalities in, MA, in the Metro mayors. Um, but again, this is something that as we pilot this, if, um, if it seems like a useful tool, we could potentially expand to other um, areas of the region as well. And we can put the link in the chat. Thanks so much, Sasha and Rachel. Um, so the tool is kind of the first step in determining um, cool roof suitability. Um, as Sasha mentioned, it's only available for the Metro Mayor's communities, but the um, target audience for the tool can be both municipalities, um, anyone who's interested in kind of promoting the adoption of cool roofs in your city or town. And that's where that dashboard of how many roofs, how many potential roofs, what's the square footage, what's the number of impacted units comes in handy, but also for property owners and managers on their own building. Um, so if the tool indicates that you might be um, suitable for a cool roof after filtering by low slope and dark colored roofs, then the next step would be to um, take our cool roof assessment, which is not available yet on the tool, but will be um, by the end of the month. And the purpose of the tool is just to help property owners walk through characteristics of their building that might help their roof make, that might um, make their roof more or less suitable for a cool roof. And so questions like, is your roof in direct sunlight or is there significant shade shading from nearby buildings or trees that'll impact your um, suitability for a cool roof? Or do you have a dark colored roof? Do you have a um, flat roof? Um, does your building have AC or is kind of strong insulation? Uh, does your building um, require or have high demand for cooling or refrigeration? And if so, um, cool roofs can help maintain lower temperatures. So the self-assessment is, serves as the second step um, to determining cool roof suitability. Finally, just want to open the floor and see if there are any questions that we didn't address in the chat, any thoughts um, that come up for you as we talk about cool roofs. Feel free to um, unmute, raise your hand, or throw any questions in the chat. So there were two questions in the chat. Someone asked about if we will share and post the recording, um, and that is the plan. Um, so we will we'll share the recording and the slides from this and then post it um, on MAPC's website in the near future. Um, and then also uh, Suzanne asked about the sort of research behind the um, winter heat penalty um, and we're happy to share some of the, um, research and articles that, that we've looked at, um, in a follow-up, but Julia, I don't know if you want to say anything more beyond, um, uh, what you put in the chat. I think that's right. Um, we, we also had some interviews with Cool Roof Program Managers from New York City and Philadelphia and talked specifically about the heating penalty and, I think the, the consensus from kind of this general Northeastern region of the US is the same. Um, and then Sasha, I wonder if you might know, I, I think I vaguely remember hearing that um, Boston University researchers um, are exploring more about cool roofs. Do you know if the heating penalty or energy savings is a part of that scope? I believe that's true. Um, I can also put in another resource. This one is not, Suzanne, this might, be one that you already have looked at because it's from 2015. So um, already a bit dated, but we can um, try to see if there's some more recent um, research around um, around it. This study looks looked at um, cool roofs, uh, not specifically in Boston, but in Anchorage, Milwaukee, Montreal, and Toronto, um, and looked at sort of some of the uh, potential like disbenefits um, and included um, snow and snow thickness um, in their analysis as well. Yeah, right off the top of my head, I don't remember what research we used. We used we used research. I just brought it up because um, it came up like big time in Cambridge, and there were a lot of people sort of bringing it up, and and we had to spend a lot of time in a lot of different meetings on sort of pushing back on 
on the issue. This, this came up in connection with um, Green Roof Ordinance that was adopted a while back in Cambridge. So I it just I think it would be really helpful to if you have something nicely packaged uh, because I I uh, there's I think there's a high probability that it will come up and it's hard if you have to use like these really like scientific mm -hmm. studies to push back on a resident's concern. So if you had something that was easily accessible, I think that would be great. I appreciate that thought. And um, one thing we didn't mention is we are developing a, a suite of tools and resources um, as a part of this project. And one will be educational materials and including social media assets. And I think that that would be a great kind of punchy social media asset to, to describe um, in a very digestible way, what is the heating penalty and why it's not really an issue in our region. Um, we have also been speaking with folks from the National League of Cities and the Smart Services Coalition, and they are working on a cost benefit tool for cool roofs for the um, greater Boston area as well. Um, so we hope to link that resource once it becomes available. I believe they said at the end of July. So hopefully that helps um, folks better conceptualize the energy savings of cool roofs. There's another question in the chat it says, are there any concerns in our climate with snow, snow melt or lack thereof with cool roofs on flat roofs, for example? Um, and I have not heard of that being a concern um have not either and we had a focus group with housing providers and municipal facilities managers who have done cool roofs before and we asked questions about um kind of the operations and maintenance of cool roofs and how they differ from uh traditional or conventional roofs and we heard that there is not really a significant difference um and the only time there is a difference it's like it makes maintenance a little bit easier um, so there's a, another positive for cool roofs, um, but I don't think that there, from what we researched and what we heard from others, there's not any kind of significant concerns with snow melt. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, seeing none, do you wanna to go to the next slide? Um, so this is just another plug for the next webinar that we'll be doing um, towards the end of the month where we'll get a little bit more into detail. This was really like Cool Roofs 101 and an introduction to the site suitability tool. Um, the next part will be more geared towards how municipalities can use cool roofs to advance climate goals. Um, so how they can develop either like incentive programs or um, zoning and land use policies and some model procurement language as well. So, um, and at that point, we may also be able to share some of the other like educational resources that we're developing as well. Um, so please do register for that if you're interested. Um, and then if you're interested in keeping conversation going around cool roofs, um, please do reach out to us because um, uh, once this MVP grant funded program ends, we'll also be thinking about what phase two looks like and how we can continue to support um, municipalities in the region in adopting cool roofs. And thank you. And we'll give you 14 minutes of your day back. <laughs> or also, all. if you want to chat afterwards, we can stay online. <laughs>